going to go ahead and announce my live video for August 4th, 2018, Saturday night, 10 p.m., Greenwich Mean Time. So that's going to be London time, 10 o'clock, as before. And we'll talk about stuff and discuss things. Well, I've had a few supporters leave me on the basis of the last video I uploaded. And because I like to, I tend to have a personality where I, I, I tend to kind of lighten the mood or make light of things. I don't really see why something like remembering a past life memory should become such a political dogmatic issue. Um, let me, I'll put it, I'll give you an example, for example, a man, if a man came to you and began saying that he remembered being a Nazi in the Third Reich in the 1940s, or died in the 40s, and worked with Hitler, this kind of thing, and he was an officer in, in the Reich. Now, let's say he's not really prejudiced now in any way at all. Would you say that he's divine? Would you say that he's someone who should have resonate with a sense of balance when he speaks? Well, why not? You, many of you have said that a star seed, which I, I don't really like that term anyways, is a divine thing that being and having alien past life memories makes you uh, somehow uh, you're supposed to present yourself as, as, as a divine person. The 14th incarnate of the Dalai Lama in a book written by Thomas Laird. It's a long book. It took him six years to write this. He interviewed the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama referred to himself as like an old human soul that had come back many times, and what made him special was that he can, he can remember experiences in other human lives, which gave him, gave him a great deal of, of sense of wisdom and balance right there. And he did make references to non-human souls may come down here, but he never made any reference to them being uh, bodhisattvas or, or anything like that. It wasn't as if they were divine. Um, I can't bring the evidence to bear on it. I'm only because I, I, I'm tired right now, but I'm not, not going to go go down that hole. I really don't want to make. I don't. I really don't want to go down this 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 debate anymore with anybody. Um, but there was evidence that suggested from a lot of us some years ago when we were connected to Starseed websites. There was some evidence that suggested that the CIA, NSA. You know that you know the you know what I'm going to say. You you already know what I'm going to say. Uh, were the ones that set up the whole paradigm. They infiltrated the Starseed websites, and it's all an allegation. I, I don't have if I had the evidence to show you, then 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 it wouldn't be an allegation. Here it is. Uh, but the allegation goes that they infiltrated these Starseed websites and presented themselves as starseeds, which by definition is someone that has memory recollection of being something non-human from an intelligent civilization. And they played upon the ignorance of the public in general. And popular, they played upon public pop culture that advanced aliens like in Close Encounters of the Third Kind and other movies um, like Cocoon, directed by Ron Howard. They're glowing white beings that are very, very advanced and, and divine in, in nature, very balanced and resonate with. There, there was this, while I don't doubt such civilizations exist, that even in the movie Cocoon, they were running around dressed up as human beings wearing latex suits they acted like human beings when they were down here on Earth. Now, because people had have this ignorance on, on the subject of what, what star seed, what is that supposed to mean? 
So they ascribed a meaning to this, according to the conspiracy about this. They, they, they put a meaning to it. They, they, they're the ones that created the paradigm. They're the ones that said that anything to do with starseed must always, the person must always be presenting themselves as looking very balanced. And mantras, oh, I'm checking, you know, you know. Which is something of a contradiction, since many of us only had the one past life memory. I don't, i.e., I don't have the Dalai Lama's 14, 13 other past life memories of living in 13 other alien bodies. So, for some reason, um, it, it means, it, it, what, it, what, it, what it says to people when you say uh, alien soul and a human being, somehow or other seems to equate to uh, advanced, higher person than you. And what I, what we often talked about in the, in, in, in the Starseed discussion groups was that perhaps it's not the case. We're all here to learn from each other equally. The word is equally. First of all, most religions on earth are built around the uh, hierarchy paradigm. No matter what faith you are, no matter what denomination, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, it doesn't matter. You have a lower and higher ranking system. And always a god or some higher source of some kind is the highest part of it. And in that archety archetypical uh, paradigm hierarchy, then it's easy to throw in some people, insert some people somewhere in the middle who now present themselves as the guru masters who have the knowledge and the ways and connectivity. And they're the ones that are going to now supplant in and say, listen to me. I have the information and you will all follow under me. That's a very human construct for me. I, I don't find anything that I remember in a past life experience in another world ever agreeing with that. It is completely human. In a private Facebook group some years back, this goes back a few years ago, the admin of the group. Um, it was a group dedicated to the late Dr. John E. Mack on, it was after, titled after his book, Passport to the Cosmos. Now, I don't hold anything against the admins of the group. I liked the admins. I like them. A man named Alan Drake, who's uh, you know a self-claimed experiencer, former military person, things like that, got into an argument with me about this when I, I was saying that the connection with Benico, an extraterrestrial, multi-terrestrial human hybrid girl, was an equal one. And that the statement and the message that I felt that the core message was equality is what's most important between intelligent civilizations that are benevolent is equality. Simply that. We see you equally. You're equal to me. I'm equal to you. So we're all going to learn from each other. There is no divine plan, no hierarchy that you got to get your head out of that sickening dogma of hierarchy that is destroying this planet. I've said it many, many times, and I, I stopped saying it years ago because I felt it was just an absolute waste of time. You're preaching to a, a, deaf, a bunch of deaf choir. They don't want to hear this. They do this. No, no, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear that. And I'm like, well, no, you, you see... It's your hierarchy that you've established as a means of control, an effective means of span of control. You've got the pyramid. You, you seem to have a need to want to put people at the top, and you supplant these people, and these people um, typically tend to be hand-picked by the governments of the time period, whether it's the Roman government from 2,000 years ago, um, you know, with... Uh, you know, one of the biggest messages in the in the Bible, the Christian Bible, comes from Paul, uh, a Roman citizen that, according to uh, research, uh, did not, in fact, interact with Jesus Christ. And uh, so, but Paul becomes uh, the main vocal person of the New Testament. That's rather interesting. And then it was a book that was then edited in the third century C.E. 
uh, uh, you know, by the Roman, the Ro now the Holy Roman Empire, they decided that they would adopt the Christian faith as their main faith. And so we have this, uh, it's, it's all based on a Roman uh, uh, system of, of control. Now, people today say it was all divinely put, put together like that. Well, that's easy to say from a perspective in which 2,000 years on, the Roman Empire is clearly gone. Uh, and in fact, the original Christians, if you will, really hadn't an idea of what a Baptist was going to be, or, or a, Jew, a Jehovah's Witness, or, or a Pentecostal, or any of the others. And, um, of course, then, uh, some centuries later, there was a guy that had inspiration, or whatever his experiences were with an angel, and we end up with uh, another faith, which seems to offshoot, well, it seems to be its own thing, and then it just kind of goes from there. But there always seems to be a need to have some main person, and then you have lower people, like disciples or lieutenants, and then you seem to have a need, but there never seems to be an, an, a system like this. It's equal. That is what's destroying this planet and tearing it to pieces, is that everybody's pyramid is more important than the other one's pyramid. Well, my pyramid reaches higher to those divine things than yours. The mine is reaching higher. Now, when star seeds simply, simply translates to I remember a past life not as a human being. It, it does not in any way give a connotation to a divine holy person. It does not in any way elevate me, i.e. I am not looking to gain some kind of public attention by saying, hi public, I'm an alien. For all you UFO researchers, oh by the way, I'm an alien. Um, it's, it was never intended for, for that reason. In the, in the early days, we didn't want to say that to the, we didn't want to do that. We all went into the starseeds.net where we had, uh, hidden names. We had, you know, our identities were hidden. And we could really open up. I really feel very, very con confined in being public about this. I, I don't think that that was ever mission statement, if there is a mission. It could just be that, like other intelligent races, like like the human race here, there is this light, and you fly through this thing, and, and you're not maybe supposed to do that, and, and it regurgitates you, recycles you, and you come back as a cat, dog, or another, another human, for example. For whatever reason, I remember these experiences, but none of my experiences ever said, now how can you, how can you, uh, many of us, I call us genuine starseeds, uh, simply had a recollection of a past life experience that was not a human being, of an anthropomorphic, intelligent being. It could have been a head, two arms, two legs, could have been reptilian, could have been something else. Might not even have looked human, or humanish, or humanoid. And so those resonate with me as genuine because it's like in my case. And that's it. It's like saying... It's equal to saying, hi, I remember being a man that worked in a coal mine and died in the 1900s. Or, I remember being, I've had this lifetime memory where I was in the Civil War. Or, or I had a lifetime memory, I was a cop in, in Chicago during the 1920s. And there was this little Davo girl I fell in love with and she... She died, and, and it, because the bootleggers at the time wanted to get even with me. I mean, you, you hear these stories. It, it was nobody famous, and this isn't. Uh, this is not to elevate me in famousness of any way. Uh, I, I don't. I, I shouldn't. I know. I know, and I. I, I do tend to get a little. I. I. I, I, I get. I guess you could say silly. I. I, I don't. I think the, many people take themselves too seriously. And I'm. I'm only recalling. Something that, how do I know that? Well, since my childhood, I can go, yeah, and I remember that. And as I say those words, I remember that. But it also became a big cult thing. And it became very cult-like. Cult and only elite, uh, selected, selected ones were allowed to say something like that. You were what in a past life? Or a reptilian? And uh, getting away from being silly for a minute. I mean, they, they, they did. They they. they there was a lot of childish high school cult 
nepotism going on, which I was like, what the hell does it have to do with a, a past life recollection? Whether it be human or non-human, how do you how do you say to me that this is a divine mission of balanced and moral when these are fragmented memories that I can keep recalling that I know I was in that body and I know that I was a reptilian being. I know this. And, uh, you know, I remember uh, being a bit of a disobedient uh, child to a mother that had hundreds where she laid eggs. I said reptilian. Um, it's the best I can, I can recall. Um, it was something like a reptilian, something like an amphibian. I know that we were peaceful. There was a faith that we believed in equality. That was it. There was an e a message of, 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 of equality for all intelligent life, any life which doesn't seem to resonate here on earth. Oh no, you cannot speak with judgments if you're a starseed. You cannot be, you must, you don't look like you're speaking of any balanced. Again, uh, the conspiracy theorist I spoke to found that all of that was, was bullshit created by someone in the Central Intelligence Agency or the NS, the National Security Agency. They, they, they have these people, like mostly women, who come across as spiritual leaders with psychic powers uh, who seem to be very, who come across as behaving very, I am very divine. Those are the ones you got to look out for. Watch them on Facebook. Watch them carefully. They're the ones that run around going, I am a divine oracle, crystal healer, reiki master, starseed. And they throw in starseed. And then they'll say, for some reason, they seem to have this, this book. I've yet to read their book. It's a book. They don't, they don't show us the book because they'll say, well, I have all the information about it, and if you don't, mm -hmm, if you don't act like this or answer these questions in that way, then you're not a starseed. I'm like, well, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay, so why don't you apply the same dogma and crap to someone that said he remembers being a Nazi officer in the Third Reich under Adolf Hitler? Why didn't you pull that same book at it? It should apply. It is past life memory, right? Well, if you don't say that you wanted to hurt people and march around the streets of Berlin with swastikas, well, then you're not a past life Nazi. Well, well wait a minute. You, you can't, that, that's very hypocritical of you. Uh, and you know who you are. You're being very hypocritical. Uh, tonight's video is being shot while there's a total blood moon. The, the blood moon is out. Maybe this is what's drawn me to this. And I do have a clairvoyant, a psychic connection, uh, a love, a very deep love with, with Benico. And this connection, this is not a connection, this is a one soul, this is unity, is what this is. This is quantum physics being played out in real life. And when she bonded with me, uh, and I agreed to this in 1992, when we met then, and she agreed to do this with me, and I agreed to do it with her. We became one soul. Uh, I, 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 would, I always put that as a higher significance and something that should be investigated and talked about um, than you know, these fragmented memories of living as a non-human uh, being on another world. Um, I, I, I no offense to that civilization I came out of, but I, I, I love her, she loves me, and um, that's also been a big, big contentious issue, that because of, again, for many, this is a, a lot of hi hypocritical talk going on here, folks, in the public, is what's happened, listen to this. So, for many, many years, and on many talk shows... It was said by Dr. David Jacobs and other researchers in the UFO abduction community that alien abduction was a bad thing. The Travis Walton case became a movie called Fire in the Sky. It scared the hell out of people. Whitley Strieber's movie Communion was anything but freaky. I mean, it didn't, it didn't leave people feeling warm inside when they watched it. It was all very surreal and bizarre. Fictional shows like Close Encounters of the Third Kind seem to reach people about loving aliens, and some people it reached them pretty deeply. Uh, but th those voices were getting drowned out by 
public relations officers and people around these well-famous researchers like Dr. Jacobs who were saying to the public, fear this, run away from this. And then they started talking about it in the 1990s. Tim White hosted a show called Sightings, produced by Henry Winkler. And Tim White often had abductees on there, and they played scary music, and they showed alien hybrid babies. And they presented it as a frightening thing. I remember documentaries where a woman, uh, without naming names, was sitting there talking about she was doing this, and I saw these embryos, and I know that that was mine. And she was be, and the music was, <laughs> and then there was like this recreation of a dark room with gray Zeta alien creatures holding a hand out and grabbing her stomach, and and then there was like this embryo creature, and and they were presenting it to her like that, and everybody, I mean, it scared, the, if you had never had any experience with this, or turned on the TV set, it was like a satyr for a Halloween special, you know, and that was what alien hybrids were regarded as for forever through the media. I, you can't find anything in the media that ever said anything good about them. Here come the hypocritical bastards, here they come. Well... I went public, and I, you know, in, in 20, 2011, I created a Facebook like page, ET Hybrids, the Assassini. Now, there was a guy channeling a being called Bashar, Daryl Anka. And Daryl Anka kept getting drowned out for a long, long time throughout the 90s, 80s, 90s, 21st century. And... Because there was so much, there's so much dogma running around, running down the whole thing. And Dr. Jacobs saying that the alien hybrids are here to take us over. All of his research said it. And yet, I, I created a like page. Bridget Nelson came along and created one after that. Lovely lady. Uh, I got to talk to her on Facebook a few times. She's an experiencer with uh, alien-human hybrid children all the rest. And pretty soon... We had people talking about them and sharing the truth about them, that there's a very loving connection to many of them. I can't speak about other, other, other experiences. If you're having a bad experience and it looks like an alien, you think it's an alien hybrid, it's probably not. All of our experiences were loving and they reach out to us and want to love us and want to know us, i.e. my experience with Benico. I, w I w went talking about it, in 92, about what happened in 1992, well, pretty soon I started getting beat up over this online. I had people, there was a woman named Maria that showed up to me and a few others, and they, they were immediately calling, how can you claim to have a divine experience with that being? Who are you to have that divine experience? Oh, wait a minute, excuse me, back up. You hypocritical bitch. Who are you with sitting there on your Facebook page talking about being a Catholic and a Christian and I'm quite sure did not like alien abductions, alien Zetas, or even hybrid children for that matter never having anything on her page about this in any way at all would sit there and then start to decide to turn the tables on this and say that Benica was a divine connection you're the same crowd Maria that would burn Benico and myself at a, at a pole and call us heretical, heretical idiots. You're the same people, probably working in the CIA, I would imagine, that, that, that Christians in action, that would, that would take us to a pole somewhere, put kerosene around underneath us and burn us and say, burn you her, burn, you know. But then to the, to, to the public, this is what many, many did. The, the, these these people, the, the conspiracy theorists that I spoke to were saying that these people were CIA. For many years, the CIA went after, according to these conspiracy theorists, went, went to war in great lengths to convince the public this is a scary thing. And then all of a sudden, when those of us came forward and said there's a love connection with these human hybrid alien people, so, uh, they, they, they were like, uh, uh, 
Uh, y yes, yes. They're above you. They're smarter than you. They have a spiritual connection. They're oneness and they're loving. They're this, they're that. And I, it's like, it's called, in psychology, it's called mirroring. What, what she did was, because she's a psychologist, she mirrored me. She would only repeat back what I was saying. Benico came across as very loving, equal, Maria, very, very sweet, uh, very compassionate, and we share a one unity love. Unity! You mean like a Christ consciousness? Well, yes, that's right, she has a unity and, and a love and a oneness, but you, however, I can sense with my clairvoyance that you are not genuine, you are not resonating with a balance, I can sense that you don't have a balance within you. Wait a minute, wait, 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 did you not say at the start of the conversation, Maria, that judging, being judgmental was about, I'm not judging you, I'm simply saying what you said to me, well, that, 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 that's true, she was, she was only repeating what I was saying, but she, in, in truth, the truth, Maria hates alien human hybrids. She would very much hate Benico. She's very much at war with her. The CIA normally are. Uh, uh, the, well, the ones that I assisted never gave off the impression they hated them back in the 1990s, uh, but it just seemed like a time, if there was an opportunity, they come knocking on my door, you want to join to be an asset. Yes, maybe I can help elevate your thinking about this. These aren't your enemies. That was my motivation for helping. So there's a lot of hypocrisy going on here. A lot of hypocritical stuff going down here. And I took quite a beating. Verbal, I mean, very abusive beating. And there was a lot of these, these young women. That, that I'm, I'm 46. This is back when I was 38, 39, 40. They were like 20, 21-year-old little, little young women. Uh, many were gifted artists, and they were getting well-known for drawing their uh, abduction, alien contact experiences, and, and just had a lot of a lot of people just say, oh, that's wonderful. And they were meeting me privately, and they were, I hate you. I hate your guts. And they were saying that to me, and they were telling me, you're an evil man. You're a bad man. You chase women. You're a womanizer. And I'm like, I, I, I don't, oh, okay, I'm, I'm divorced. Uh, I, I don't have anybody. Um, there was one girl in Paraguay that I, I went to talk to privately in, in, in a romantic sense without dropping names. It didn't work out. Fair enough. That's life. What the hell does that got to do with anything else? I don't know. <laughs> how, and how does that fit in the box with my experience with Benico? I, I'm sorry. Does that how, does that how does that evil me up? How does that make you a womanizer when it's just a one guy? You know, is it one girl? Uh, one guy just, um... But then they, they, there was a lot of that, that backlashing, a lot of lying going on. There, there, there was allegations of, of 50 or 20 or 30 of these people running at me, running all over Facebook. Well, he's, he ever, he's chasing women everywhere. And, and it, it got so far off the mark about the fact that, you know, I found myself talking to, my, to the walls. I wasn't, I wasn't getting the message out. I'm not getting it clear. I'm not. I, mean, I went to YouTube. I started making YouTube videos, and that that was in 2012. So this is some time back, and you can see my first videos in 2012. It's on my channel about Benico and what happened. That that was people will say to then 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 the spiritual dogma guru crowd. Do you feel called to make that video? Very simply, yes. I love Benico, and she loves me, and I can feel that love emanating through me, and I feel it. Why does it have to become a lengthy, political, dogmatic discussion of spiritual truths and spirituality and this shit? If you're married and you're watching this, do you do that when you say that to your husband, Maria? I love you, I love you too, Michael, Maria. Do you sit there, Michael, do you have a oneness unity connection with me in which we are divinely connected on the one, he'd probably be like, well, yeah, I don't know, do you, I, I, I love, I love you, I, how far do you need to go in the depth on this, sweetheart? I mean, I love you, you love me. Why do we need to get so deep about that point? Why does the connection with Benico and the love I have with her have to be so, you, so beyond you, so weird, so off the page? That's prejudicing. It's all part of a very 
intricate, if you believe the conspiracy theorists, uh, way of running someone like myself out of existence and running him off. In other words, we carve him off from all the all the contact and anybody that would listen to this guy and just I mean, when I'm in a corner, zap, phew, YouTube videos disappear, Facebook disappears, Jason Moss, J.P. Moss is gone, and that's it. But I'm, I'm bringing you something that would, would never frighten you because I'm telling the truth. She would never hurt any of you. Um, there, she's special to me, but if you met her, some of you might even be kind of bored after a while. You might not think it's a big deal. You'd be like, yeah, whatever, I have to go to the store. It's nice to meet you. You have lovely big eyes. Okay, bye. And then you go home. You'd have an experience. Uh, you wouldn't have my experience with her because of our, our unique connection. Does that unique connection make me better? Does it make me... It, no. Shall... Okay, someone asked me, before I end this video, someone asked me, and they keep asking me, can we have a medium and psychic person channel Benico? Other than you, Jason. Well, the answer is no, because you'd have to ask her. And she is not dealing with anyone other than me. Now, if anyone has, has problems with me, uh, well, then, then that, that's your issue. I don't know. I've been honest. I've been very clear about this. Uh, I'm not pushing. I'm not asking for you to give me money. You don't have to buy any of these books that I've written about her. Uh, you've taken the time to watch the videos. Thank you. You don't have to subscribe or like. You can just watch the damn video. But at least you might hopefully come away with at least what you're going to do for me and her. If you've seen my videos, any of these videos about her, you're going to come away with at least a slightly bit more education and enlightenment to the fact that you're not going to be harmed by them. And you're not going to be hurt by her. Love is very real. We're very real. She's very real. And we're real people. Okay, just real people. And that's that's my video. Okay? Now before the memory runs out, I'll just sit here and just be doing something stupid. <laughs> this is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. And they'll continue singing it forever just because this is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. And they'll continue singing it forever just because this is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Yes, I can do something like this. Why not? Why not? Why? Does it have to be anything other than... Why can't I be me? Can I be me? Huh? What? You made these statements about alien contact. You can't do that. You must... This is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. And they'll continue singing it forever just because this is the song that doesn't end. Right, Kermit? Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Well, Kermit and I... <laughs> I, w I would cut the video, but I'm going to let... The, I'm going to let... I'm going to... I'm going to sit here for a minute and just let the, let the memory run out on its own.